Hi friends. Can you imagine that you can live in isolation? Likewise, a nation cannot exist in isolation. So, in this class, let's see how a nation is dependent upon other nations and what is international economics. As we said, in today's dynamic world, no nation exists in economic isolation. Economic transactions have become inevitable because no nation can be self-sufficient or self-reliant in all respects. All aspects of a nation's economy are linked to the economies of its trading partners. In this class, we will learn about what is international economics, the subject matter of international economics, its scope and its importance. So first of all, what is international economics? Let us see some definitions. According to Charles P. Kindleberger, a US economist, International economics is a study of the production, distribution and consumption of goods, services and capital on a worldwide basis. And according to both Sorenstein and Jeffrey Reed, international economics is the branch of economics which deals with international trade and international finance. Thus, International economics is one of the most important branches of the dynamic discipline of economics. It deals with the economic interdependence among nations and it studies the basic principles related to international trade and international finance. Now let's see the subject matter of international economics. As a separate branch of study, it has two distinct parts theoretical and descriptive. Under theoretical aspects, there are pure theories and monetary theories. Under descriptive aspects, there are international transactions and institutional environment. The pure theories of international economics are primarily microeconomic in nature and cover a very wide area, encompassing the following. The basis or causes of international trade and the pattern of trade. The effect of trade on production, consumption and distribution of income. Effect of trade on relative factor prices and product prices. Gains from trade and the distribution of the gains. Effect of trade barriers on trade, factor and product prices and income distribution. Effects of trade on economic growth and vice versa. The monetary theories of international economics are primarily macroeconomic in nature and deal with matters pertaining to the balance of payments and international monetary system. It covers areas such as causes of balance of payment disequilibrium, different methods for the correction of balance of payment disequilibrium, exchange rate determination, international liquidity, relationship between balance of payments position and other macroeconomic variables. The descriptive aspects of international economics are concerned with the description of international economic transactions and the relevant institutional environment. It covers the international trade flow of goods and services, flow of international financial and other resources, international institutions like International Monetary Fund IMF, World Bank, Regional Development Banks, United Nations Commission on Trade and Development, that is UNCTAD, World Trade Organization, WTO, International Economic Agreements, and so on. Business strategies such as multinational investments, production sharing, global sourcing, joint venturing, and other alliances have been increasingly fostering economic integration and transnationalization. These forces will gather more momentum in the future. Now let's discuss scope or contents of international economics. The scope of international economics is broad and its elements are very much intricate. The international economic interdependence of countries is on account of exchange of goods and services, international payments and receipts, 
commercial and other related policies and multilateral economic institutions concerning trade and finance. The basic contents of international economics may be summed up as follows. Theories of international trade, theories of commercial policy, foreign exchange markets, balance of payments, international institutions, open economy, macroeconomics. Let's see one by one. The theories of international trade highlights the basis of trade or as to why international trade takes place. The entire structure of the classical theories rests upon the principle of comparative cost advantage and the modern theories investigate in a more systematic and scientific way the issues related to terms of trade, gains from trade, capital movements, technical progress and the implications of international trade for growth and welfare. Theories of commercial policy analyzes the reasons for and the effects of tariff and non-tariff restrictions on international trade. Under foreign exchange markets, since the international transactions take place through different currencies, the rates of exchange among various currencies have to be determined. In case of balance of payment, it is a detailed account of the receipts and payments to the rest of the world by a particular country on account of transactions of goods, services and capital. International economics deals with the complete framework of balance of payment accounts, effects of disequilibrium upon the economic performance and welfare of the people of a given country and the alternative mechanisms for correcting the balance of payment disequilibria under different international monetary systems. International economics examines the working and policies of the international institutions that have been created to deal with the problems regarding stabilization of exchange rates, correction of balance of payment disequilibria, and meeting the shortage of international liquidity so as to promote the growth and development of nations across the globe. The most prominent institutions include the International Monetary Fund IMF, International Bank for Reconstruction and Development IBRD or World Bank, International Development Authority IDA, International Finance Corporation IFC, United Nations Commission on Trade and Development UNCTAD and the World Trade Organization WTO. And in case of open economy macroeconomics, it deals with the mechanisms of adjustment in balance of payment disequilibria. It analyzes the relationship between internal and external sectors of the economy of a nation and how are they interrelated or independent with the rest of the world economy under different international monetary systems. Now let's examine the importance of international economics. International economic studies how a number of distinct economics interact with one another in the process of allocating scarce resources to satisfy human wants. International economics focuses on the problems of two or more economies. Since modern economies are open economies, their functioning can be analyzed only with the help of international economics. International economics helps explain international interdependence. International interdependence refers to the degree to which economic events in one country affect others. Nations are interrelated through international trade, investment and other cross-border transactions. Indeed, national economic policies cannot be formulated without evaluating their probable impacts on the economies of other countries. Another reason for studying international economics is to understand global affairs. An understanding of global affairs is essential because we are living in a globalized world. International events have enormous economic consequences. Important global issues having terrible economic consequences to the world are global financial crisis, global recession, the widening gap between the rich and the poor nations, the spread of killer diseases like novel coronavirus disease, and increasing poverty in developing countries and global terrorism. 
International economics provides a complete picture of an economy that is increasingly global rather than national. Globalization is an integral part of the recent surge in economic growth and change. International economics is helpful in understanding what goes on in the world of today and to be informed consumers, citizens and voters. On a more practical level, international economics is required for numerous jobs in multinational corporations, international banking, government agencies and international institutions like IMF and World Bank. So, from this class, I hope you could understand what is international economics and scope and its importance. And you just go through the notes that I have given you in Google Classroom. In the next class, we will discuss why nations trade and what are the difference between internal trade and international trade. Till then, take care. Bye. Enjoy life. Keep learning. Stay home. Stay safe. Thank you.